brother! And welcome everyone to another Super Carlin Brothers review. Today we will be discussing The Lion King. Yeah, and trying to figure out whether or not it was worth making a live action version of this movie. Let's dive on in. <laughs> Guys, before we dive on in, I want to draw your attention to the coffee mugs we have here on the table. In case you didn't know, we do have our own coffee company, CarlinBrothersCoffee.com, where you can get your coffee on a subscription basis, giving you 50% off your first order. If you would like to check it out so you never forget to have coffee, check the link in the description down below. Yeah. The Lion King. Spoilers? I don't really feel like you need to say spoilers for The Lion King, but hey, maybe you've lived under Pride Rock your whole life and didn't see what was happening on top. And, you know. Wow, that was a fantastic way to, to be like the whole take on the under the bridge thing. Yeah, or well, you know, I was riffing. Ha, ha. That's, that's a, a joke from the movie. That's a spoiler. That's a spoiler. There you go. Pumbaa, he's riffing. <laughs> Pumbaa. Um, oh my gosh. Okay, so coming into this review, mm -hmm. knowing that John Favreau directed the movie. Yes. I'm having this experience where I love John Favreau movies. He's done like Dude. Elf and Iron Man and he's Chef. Like, he can, like, do no wrong, basically. He's very More good. Jungle less. Book. Jungle Book. Okay, but in Chef, there is this scene. Chef is, like, a movie that he has written, stars, directs, the whole thing. Yeah. There's this scene where he's he cooks, and this, this food critic comes in and, like, just rips him apart. Right. Especially his, like, molten lava cake. Yeah. And in the movie, there's this scene where he goes in, and he, like is just losing his mind on the critic in the restaurant okay. and he like grabs this molten lava cake off a table and it's like it's molten you know like, okay. like he explains how it works walking into this review there's so much of me that feels like terrified of john favreau watching oh, blasting this review through the door being like you don't understand what i was going for right yeah it's like you don't get it do you feel like he must have had to deal, like, he's ob he was the obvious choice for this because, like, one, he did the Jungle Book. Sure. And, like, personal opinion, the live-action Jungle Book, way better than the animated one. Yes, personal absolutely. I would, I would agree with that yeah. 100%. Improved on it in many ways, made it more of a cohesive story, and had to deal with all of the live-action animation animal stuff and, like, just nailed it. Yes. Right? So now they're doing this one. John Favreau's coming off of Chef and like Endgame and Far From Home and it's like yeah he can't do anything wrong and he seems like the obvious person but then you get landed this movie in your lap and it's like this is the Lion King right you know it's, it's, it's like, already pretty perfect right and like what do you do <laughs> I know well so and that's the thing so like going into uh, for those of you who don't know who John Favreau is he's happy yeah. from like MCU. all of the MCU things yeah. Um, and also, yeah, again, directed Iron Man, which I think I said before. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever you're coming into these live action movies, like Beauty and the Beast, I remember like we had found so many plot holes with right. the thing. And so like the opening sentence of the live action Beauty and the Beast, they go through and they fix like seven plot holes Most right away. Them. <laughs> like, like hey, let's just get, everyone I, needs to not talk about this. Let's, let's get that all cleared up. Mm -hmm. So coming into uh, this, I know like you and I were kind of like going through the, the Lion King with a fine tooth comb, trying to figure out like, what is it that they need to repair? Um, and, or, or what could they do different? What could they, that's the thing. It's like, what can you really, there's not really many plot holes in the Lion King for the most part that like. Right. Okay. I don't know. And so I think, I think for me, what I was curious to see is whether or not they would develop other characters or sort of like right. have, I mean, you're going to have the same plot probably at the end of the day. Like obviously Mufasa is going to die and obviously Simba's Simba's going to go gonna away go and then he's going to eventually come, come back, back and fight Scar. Yeah. Um, so like you have to have those beats because it's not the Lion King without it. Right. Um, but one of the things that I thought live action Aladdin did that was really spectacular that I was hoping they would do in this movie mm -hmm. was they beefed up Jasmine's role like like a lot a lot a lot yeah. like and if and if you've seen our review we know you know that we love Jasmine and we thought that like she was the best part of yeah of the live action the live action Aladdin. Of Aladdin um and so with the Lion King I was really kind of hoping that Nala's character was going to have like a lot more meat on the bone right. Like, I mean, they get Beyonce to voice Nala. So right. It's like, all right, you've got, mm-hmm, okay, I like where you're going. Yes. Beyonce, also pretty awesome. Yep. Yeah. And then they do, They, I, 
they try to like elevate her a little bit. She gets like one scene where she's sort of escaping Pride Rock and that's like beefed up a little. It's not too much different. And then they have this like um, unnecessary rivalry with Shenzi who gets like beefed up a little bit as well. Shenzi but, being the top hyena. The, the top hyena. Yep. And it's just like, well, that didn't really pay out in a very big way. Like, when they introduce Shenzi in this movie as, like, the leader of the hyenas, it's sort right. of like, she's, like, their, their mini-leader. And I was like, what was the point of that? Why did they do that? And then, like, at the end, her and Nala have, like, their little, like, mini-boss battle. And I was like, oh, I see why they made Shenzi. So that Nala could have a big fight herself but she just like knocks her off a rock and she doesn't even die and then you know it's like oh, they, they okay. don't really there there wasn't even that much attention drawn to it and yeah so that was that was the thing for me uh sort of like assessing how i felt about that situation because i thought i thought the shifting of the three hyenas was interesting and mm -hmm. it was sort of like a new take on on like their trio dynamic where, yeah where they were sort of like little minions of scar and instead this one shenzi was sort of like she is her own leader, and Scar sort of, like, appeals to their, you guys have been stuck in the shadows, like, let me help bring you out. Right. Whereas before, it seemed like they were already kind of followers of Scar. Um, right. The thing that I thought that they could have done so much better with that is that when they go to the elephant graveyard and you have Shenzi sort of come out, and, like, you know, it's, like, this super, like, they're about to be killed right. moment... Um, I thought they could have set up a really awesome situation where Nala sort of takes on Shenzi head-to-head -head and Simba sort of, like saves Nala from that situation. Yeah, which, just like tackles her or something. Yeah, it's, real I mean, quick. Really, it ends up being Zazu. So like, it doesn't have to which, be the case yeah. that, uh, that, you know, that, it, that it's Simba's, you know, saving the day or anything like that. Although I also think that helps set up Simba as like, the, like a courageous leader, like mm -hmm. putting himself in his just, just as much harm's way. I mean, him and Nala right. are exactly the same size. But all that to be said, that I think if you have Shenzi specifically nearly kill Nala, then at the end of the movie, when it's all of a sudden like, we're on the same playing field now. Right, like, like yeah, oh, I grew up. Right, I grew up, like, it's on. Like, you were picking on a kid. Right. But now you're still in your prime, I'm in my prime, let's do this. Right, like, that'd be a little more build up, a little more payoff for that. For that particular thing. And yeah. I think it could have been super freaking cool. Mm -hmm. Like, that would have been just a, an awesome way to do it. Um, yeah. And give, like, a little bit more story arc to, to both of those characters, which otherwise I felt like, kind of fell flat a mm -hmm. little bit so yeah um, what is what is your overall what was like your overall feeling walking out of the theater okay so i i think that there's i have like a, a, a I've, layered I've answer to that. this yeah. and, and tell me how you feel about it but the um i'm, I'm going to speak on the rotten tomato scores because i think it helps present my point okay so our first viewing was opening night opening night and um oh, let me back up sorry so rotten tomato scores are 54 percent critic and 89 percent viewer right so not very good on the critic standpoint pretty good on the viewer standpoint mm -hmm. uh walking into the thursday night viewing i think i walked in like a critic sure so i walked into the movie and walked out being very disappointed right, and yeah. i was like i was so bummed because there were all these like <laughs> for haters on this movie that were like you don't need to remake the lion king it's already perfect and i wanted them to be wrong so bad <laughs> like i really 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 did like i because i just want to enjoy movies right and i was like oh it'll be so cool to like to see this story that we love and get to go back and enjoy mm -hmm. it and i walked out and i was like man they were right but so then we had our movie meetup over the weekend. Right. We were in a theater full of people that are like super Carlin Brothers fans, people who Very are super leaned into leaned Disney. Leaned into Disney stuff, yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to be with these people. Like, I'm just excited to enjoy this movie. Right. And when I just treated it as a movie that I wanted to watch, like, just to enjoy, right. I, I actually quite liked it. I, I will say I had a pretty similar experience where, like, yeah, the first time I was just, like, a little, like, and I'm going to, we'll talk about, like, every single story beat. It just felt like a lot of the main story beats, like the big moments in particular, I feel like somehow all just happened and they weren't like meaningful in the same way yes. that they were. But there were some things I do think they did actually better. Yep, I would um, agree with that. That I liked a little bit more. We'll jump into that a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, I thought, I thought the, upon the second viewing, having like readjusted my expectations, I really enjoyed it a lot more than I did on the first viewing. Yes. It probably didn't help that we worked on the Fast Facts video hours before going seeing it and 
Like, we're, like, deep into the animated stuff I, I think <laughs> right before that it's it's like watching the harry potter movies after reading the harry potter books like right. I've, I've always said the further you are from having read the more you enjoy the movies mm -hmm. because then you're not like focusing on all these things that they've changed um but that being said too as we were researching for fast facts mm -hmm. um which you can click the card if you want to check that out um part of what we do is you're very frequently going to pull clips or you're rewatching uh, the footage from particularly impactful moments. Right. And the thing that the animated movie does so well that you don't even realize until you, you go back and watch in this manner is that like they have you invested yeah. within seconds. Yeah. So like, you know, if I go to the moment like where Simba's walking up Pride Rock at the end, getting ready for his roar. Right. Like, it's like, I am uh... a full body chills. Like, you know, put me in a race right now. Like, yeah. I'm ready to go. I'm so <laughs> pumped up. And all I've watched like the 45 seconds leading up to that moment. And like, right. I'm already invested. Yeah. Um, whereas in the live action, like all of these super impactful moments that like normally like put me to like yeah, happy like draw tears you in. and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think are the areas where it fell flat. Yeah. It's just sort of like happening in order. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that being said, this movie is very funny. Like it, it is, is laugh funny. out loud funny. Yeah. Like, much funnier than the original. Yes. I thought. Yeah. Um, and I think that is one area that this, this movie wins for sure. Like, I think I, so. I think Zazu, Timon and Pumbaa. Yeah. All spectacular yeah very good very good even the um like the two other hyenas yeah yeah they're they pretty good the hyenas were pretty good in the first one too they were they yeah were. but yeah. um yeah they in particular have this like running gag where they keep like sidling up to each other <laughs> right, like, right right what are you doing <laughs> like, too close too, too close, close. See, yeah. that's a good distance yeah <laughs> they were they're great right they were great yeah. okay um so do you want to like start sort of beginning-ish movie and like work our way through what where yeah. are your thoughts or what's top of mind for you um i was let's i'm gonna let's start with what i felt like were the highlights okay and then go through what i felt like weren't which is the highlights it takes up about five lines here and then all this is just stuff i was like a little bummed about with minor good stuff so yeah we already talked about timon pumbaa zazu i feel like zazu i really like and this one voiced by john oliver um i thought in the first one, like, I really just hate Zazu. He's just annoying to, like, me right. as a viewer. And they did this, they, it's very tricky, but they do this good flip on Zazu where he's annoying sort of to the other characters, but funny to the audience. That's, yes, yeah. I love the way you said that because yeah. that's exactly how it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost like in, in the, the animated, you understand why the characters are annoyed with Zazu because you, you are, are annoyed. annoyed with Zazu. Right. And it's sort of like, that's not how a character is supposed to be. Like, right. Even an annoying character should still be fun to yeah, watch. Yeah, it should be funny to you and annoying to them. Right. Right. I'll say it again. Cheetah's never <laughs> prosper. <laughs> did, did, did you hear me? <laughs> so good. Charming. Yeah. <laughs> even he has like a few just like single word lines and just like, oh. I don't know how you delivered that so well, but right. Oh, yeah. did you think it was interesting? Speaking of Zazu, uh, that he does say "Your Majesty" at the end of the movie after oh. Simba walks down. <laughs> That's like a fun little like n like Easter egg I only just learned about from yeah, our yeah, own yeah. video. So uh, that was one from yeah. the fast facts. But at mm -hmm. the end of the animated, like Simba walks down from the rock or whatever, and you can see Zazu's mouth open and close, like he's supposed to say something and he doesn't. And right. in this one, he does. He does. So he says cool. the line that he was supposed to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Otherwise, I thought uh, overall voice acting in general, pretty good. Yeah. Um, pretty good performances for the most part. I feel like maybe it came down to like more like direction in terms of like, like oh, maybe you needed to hit this line a little harder or didn't understand the gravity of that situation. There, um, there were some things that I would say almost fell into the category of like comedic timing where I hmm. think that they still worked but they could have worked better if yeah. they had like let it draw out for like a few more seconds. Mm -hmm. And the one that specifically came to mind for me uh, while I was watching it in theaters is when Simba uh, is reunited with Nala and he introduces her to Timon and Pumbaa and he's like, this is my best friend Nala. And Timon's like, best friend? That hurts. <laughs> but he's like, best friend? That hurts. And like in my mind, I feel like I would have been like, best friend? That hurts. <laughs> like, you know, like sure. giving it more time to like, 
you know. Like, yeah. I feel like there was two people, The first, I think in both situations, there's like a joke just before that, and like people weren't done laughing, so it was easy to like miss the setup for okay. that one. Like, sure. But maybe it's hard to gauge how long the audience will laugh to something else. I'm sure that's always, yeah. yeah. And so, that could even be audience to audience. Yeah, that could change, thing um, to thing. But so, I like that they included that line, because even in the animated one, when he introduces Nala as his best friend, I feel like I'm always waiting for Timon and Pumbaa to be like, uh, hello. Oh, right, 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 yeah. <laughs> you just lived yeah. with us for the last 400 pounds of your life or whatever. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. yeah. It's like you've spent so much more time with us than you possibly could have this We're, other lion. Yeah, who you haven't seen. Right. Um, but yeah. Uh, the other thing I liked in this one in particular was they, they have a much more uh, intentional circle of life theme sure. throughout the whole movie. They include like a whole section of Timon and Pumbaa talking about, oh, life's not a circle, it's a line of indifference. Yes, and yes. I really like that. And then, uh, while I felt it went on a little too long to have this scene of like Simba's hair flying through the Africa. And I mean, it goes on for a while. I counted say. the second time. Yeah. It is it is in excess of two full minutes yeah. of watching this furball travel through yeah. the plains of Africa and a giraffe and and <laughs> yes <laughs> and the plains of a giraffe plains of a giraffe oh my gosh I thought it was long-winded I appreciated yeah. what they were going for yeah. with it um and I feel okay so the other thing is is um that particular sequence I thought was I don't want to call it an easter egg but um what happens in the animated that leads uh, Rafiki to knowing that he's still alive yeah. is the famous dust yeah. that everybody always thought there was some like subliminal mes messaging. Right, like the SFX or the right. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's where like Simba goes and he's just talking to Spoon and Pumbaa and he walks up to the edge of the rock and he like plops down and like all this dust picks up and like you sort of see it just sort of like gust along until Rafiki finally like catches yeah. it. Catches it. Um, and so instead this time it's his, it's his actual, actual like, like a piece of him. Right, which is fine. It almost makes more sense. It makes but. more sense than being able to identify dust as dust that is interacted with Simba. Well, yes and no, because on the one hand, he like picks up the dust. It's not like he just picks the dust up and is like, Simba's alive. Whereas this one, like Rafiki picks up the hair and like not four seconds later, he's like, Simba? And you're like, you just, what? Yeah. Like, he, in, like, animated-wise, he, like, catches it, and he's just sort of like, this is a little different. And he, like, mixes it around and does, like, some witch doctor shaman stuff, and he's just, like, eating a apple or something, and all of a sudden he's just like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait. Am I? Hmm? Could it be? Huh? Right. S Simba? And it's like, yeah, okay. Because, like, in the, oh, gosh, this bothers me. They have this giant two-minute scene of this hairball flying, and Rafiki, like, picks it up, and he's just like, Simba? Like, right, like right, you right, believed right, him right. dead for like 10 years. You, like, no, that's not your first thought. That's all it took. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, uh, especially because it's like, it obviously comes from his mane, which he didn't have when you knew him. So it's like, I didn't like stuff like that. That just like, it, like, because it undercuts like Rafiq. Uh, anyway, that's what we're going to, there's a lot of this stuff. Like, I even wrote that down. Rafiki accepts it too quickly. All no, right. nice. Okay. Cool. All right. Now, speaking of Rafiki. All right. Speaking this, of Rafiki. Rafiq, okay. All right. This is the opening of the movie. You seem worked up. I am worked up because this bothered me to no end, and I feel like it really set the tone for the whole movie, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So the movie opens, the, and you have a blank. Wait, tell me more about how Lion King opens because okay. I've I I maybe have forgotten. Okay, you see the logo, boom, right, and then uh, and it goes fades to black, and then you just like normally it goes it's black, and then you go no. Nah! Right, right, right away. It's sunlight. Boom. Yes. This one, you open. The sun hasn't risen yet. It's like a five second beat. And I kind of liked that because I was like, I knew exactly what was coming. It's just like, sure. oh, you're like anticipating it. Like, oh, I see. Okay. Bah! And it was cool. Like, that's the fun part of The Lion King. But even that, it felt like, are you making us wait the five seconds because you know we've seen the original? Like, does that... Oh, like that's the anticipation. Yeah, like... Because like, 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 everybody's waiting yeah, for that Yeah, because if you haven't seen it, then you don't really know what's happening. And then it might seem a little... Weird to sure. have waited. Anyway, not important. They go through the opening Circle of Life song. I actually really like. They kind of like recreate almost shot for shot many of the same yeah. like, scenes down to like the ants and like the little turkey vulture things like running in front of the elephants or whatever. Yes. And you see Rafiki come up and he meets Mufasa and they're like, oh yeah, hey, what's up, bud? And then he walks up to Pride Rock and he lifts Simba up and he stays in this stupid crouching position. He's like crouching, like squatting, just like, Hey, here's Simba. 
And I was just like, stand up. What do you, like, what do you, why doesn't he stand up? Why is he Does throwing, this, did why this is bother he... you? I, I, I know that it did not bother me as much as it bothered oh you. Oh my gosh. But I do agree. Like, that is, that is a decision where it's like, I don't get it. I don't like, get it either. Re like Rafiki does then proceed to like stand in this movie. So right. it's like, I, I, part of me was like, I wonder if that's a little more true to like a, like an actual baboon. Like, right. it, like it doesn't stand. Oh, that's what it's just um, like. Is it more realistic for him to stay crouching? Maybe. Does that mean he should have crouched? Absolutely not. It's like, he's presenting the prince to the kingdom. And like that moment in the original movie is like, Whoa! it's oh. like, Everyone, Arguably, arguably one of the most iconic moments of all of It really is. Yeah. Let me tell yeah. you something, Ben. There are, having just met 200 people for a Lion King movie event, yes. there are about four Lion King shirts, realistically. Oh, like, yeah. One of them like I was thousand. wearing last week. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's like hundreds of variations, but there's four, right? There's one big picture of Mufasa. That's one genre of Lion King shirts. Sure. There's just the words, Akuna Matata. Yeah. That's one. Okay. Three is walking on the log. That's one. And the other one invariably will involve Rafiki holding Simba up. Sure. If you just type in the Lion King, him holding him up, it's on the box cover of everything. It's like the moment, it's like the most iconic moment <laughs> from the stupid movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> the stupid movie. You were so like, worked up I, about this. It's just, it's one, it's disrespectful to the entire animated version, but that doesn't even matter. Like, even if you get rid of that altogether, just in universe, it's disrespectful to Simba and Mufasa, like the prince, like like uh, that he won't stand. That he's not standing. <laughs> like my, I'm so I hate that he doesn't stand. It's so dumb. I don't like it at all. Let me know what you think. I oh, I'm that, dying to know. Uh, there's while, while I agree, the decision to not make him stand, I think, is is the wrong decision. Yeah. Although I was not as upset as you are. I was just I was very upset by it. It was okay. so stupid. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fair enough. Fair anyway, enough. That's where we're, I'm going to stop talking about it because. Oh, what, you want to know what else? I, I can totally get you spurred right on again. Okay. What Let's do you think it. about Rafiki's stick? Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, I'm poking a bear right now. It's just like. <laughs> with, a, with a stick? Oh, oh my God. Ben, the biggest of eye rolls. No, the second biggest of eye rolls is when he reaches into that tree and pulls out the stick. I was just like. I don't know what they thought the audience was going to. Like, I know. In my mind, in, like they thought that was the equivalent of. Cap catching mule. That's bear. exactly what I like, thought. I was like, they think this is some big moment where everyone's like, oh, the stick. Which one? The stick is only relevant to the audience at all if you have seen the animated version, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. otherwise, you might like. Then you might have been wondering, like, where's the stick? Sure. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, he just pulls it out, and you're like, oh, he's got a stick. Like, huh? Like, and how hard would it have been for him to just be carrying the stick earlier? Oh, I know. Yeah. Not I, hard. I don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That that was one for me too. Like even the amount of time that it took for him to reach into this like little cubby hole in the yeah. tree to reach it out, it was like, yeah, no, that that whole oh. scene was just it was oh. not as it epic. It was not as epic as they um, thought. Yeah. No. And then okay, at least maybe he could have come in and done like some cool fight scene where he's like doing I don't know, flips or is like a bow master with the stick or something. He just sort of swings. But it he's around. just like he doesn't even like have his arm fully extended. He's just like. Ugh. You know, he like he looks like he can barely lift it. Sure, <laughs> sure, like, sure, sure. Like the payoff for the stick isn't even that good. He just no. like like he's like shoo, 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 shoo. That's that's the thing. So I mean, and and I would agree. Like so, that big final momentous mm. occasion, like that big final battle. I mean, it happens over and over and over again. For one, Pumbaa is by far the most well equipped to fight hyenas. Holy crap! Um, right? Yeah. Two, um, Rafiki does not a whole lot by swinging around. Mm -hmm. Three, Nala doesn't have a worthwhile fight with Shenzi. And four, it's kind of hard to tell Simba and Scar apart when they're both Little bit. like actual looking lions. Little bit. Like in the in the animated, and I'm not going to fault them for this. I mean, stylistically, it might just be hard to do. But like Scar is like brown and uh, Simba's, Simba's like, yellow. like gold or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was easier to like you know right. differentiate well, that, them. That is like one of the like main advantages I think the old movie has against this one is that stuff at night like like in an animated movie you can just make them like one shade of yellow darker and it's like it's night right but, like, exactly in real life when stuff gets dark it's hard to see stuff exactly and, like they're fighting that in this movie a lot and in one big scene in particular which i'm we'll get to but it's a real problem <laughs>
Okay. But okay. anyway, before we get to that, let's talk about Circle of Life ends. He's dis Rafiki disrespects the entire royal family and the kingdom by Definitely. not standing. And us too, apparently. Yeah, yeah. My gosh. And me. Big time. Uh, then they cut to Scar. Okay. And... <coughs> Boy. <laughs> Here's the thing about the animated Scar is that he's just perfect. <laughs> it's True. Like it's it's very hard. I'm like I'm not trying to be like oh because he wasn't like the original he's not a good scar. Sure. And I'm not I'm trying not to do that that much. But the comparison does exist. My real issue is that this version of Scar is so evil. He's he, like you know what I mean. I do. I do. So like the thing about animated Scar and the way that they like deliver the character is he's almost like slippery. You know, mm -hmm. it's like like he can he yes. can manipulate and he sort of has these tones and right. he knows how to like play the role when he needs to play the role. Right. He's also always got like this threatening sort of like undertone yes. to what he's, he's like saying. He's like melodramatic and he's kind of annoying and unpleasant and he's like not he's very cunning and smart but like not obviously you know what it's the exact reverse of what happened to Zazu. Where in the animated one, you, the audience, knew he was evil, but like believably Mufasa and Simba would just could, think could he's like, it. you know, yeah, didn't, wouldn't see him as a real threat. Right. Whereas this one, you're just like, he's so obviously evil to the character's faces that it like, it takes away from Mufasa and Simba's credibility as characters. Sure. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, like so when, when Scar shows up and he's like, Simba, he's in front of the stampede or whatever. It's like, you would almost think like if you're Mufasa, it's like, yeah, right, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or like, you. what did you do? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I would absolutely agree with that. Um, and I think, uh, God, the voice, I have such a hard time saying his oh, name. Uh, um, Chwaddle Ijafor. Ch Chitwell well, Ijafor. Chitwell Ijafor. I know no, that we're sorry. butchering it. Um, has a fantastic voice. Like, when yes. seeing seeing him in other roles and stuff, it's like oh, he like, does, yeah. I can get even the casting decision because I do think that like if you were to start listing people with great voices, he would be on that list. Sure. Um, but this is one of those things where like I I really just honestly think that Jeremy Irons, like, is Scar to me in a way that like I I'm so with you on it like where I mm -hmm. don't want to do this whole like it's not as good as the original and I want it to be exactly what I remember but right. better like it's like which I is an unfair I don't request. need it to be exactly the same yeah but it's just like like in like when he takes Simba down to the gorge in the animated one like when Simba's spending time with him earlier in the movie like you believe like Simba Simba genuinely like loves Scar like he's a funny quirky uncle. He's exactly. a little rude or whatever, but like, yeah, he he's your uncle. You believe Simba loves him. He has no reason not to trust him at right. all. Where in this one, you're just like, Simba, like, come on, dude. Like, what are you thinking? Yeah, like, do not spend time with this guy. Yeah. Like, he's clearly mean. Yeah. Um, like, even, I do, okay, I will say, I liked, there's one scene where um, Simba, they have the scene where he comes and talks to him and tries to trick him to going to the elephant graveyard. And Scar is like, framed in the background, like, taking up the whole screen. I really like that shot. Very nicely done. Yes, because even <clears> that, though, <throat> mm -hmm. speaks to this idea that, like, we, the audience, can know that he's menacing, but Simba's facing the other way. Right. So, like, even that is one of those where it's, like, if you have Scar present as, like, this loving uncle who, like, pre you know, you assume would have his nephew's best interest mm -hmm. at heart, except for when nobody's looking at him, that can work. Right. He's just, he doesn't have the charisma. Right. Is what it is. And let me know if this bothered you. This doesn't bother me too much, but I just felt like it wasn't, like, maybe thought out as much. But does he look, like, too skinny or, like, emaciated or something? A, a bit emaciated in a way that, like, I think... Um you you can tell that Mufasa is like the brawn. And right. I think that that's always been the point. And right. I think that the idea was that like, you know, this was like the brother who like just didn't grow up to be as big of a lion. Right. Um but that being said, he's still part of the royal family. Exactly. Like he, he should not be underfed. And then yeah. even later in the movie, uh like when he has been king for some, some amount of years time. and yeah. like hunted the whole kingdom to death. Right. Like, why isn't he, like, fat at this point? He should just be a bigger lion at that right. point in time. So like, he still looks underfed after he's been king. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. so I, I agree. I thought that was a little bit <clears throat> weird. Um, how did you feel about the, like, Scar taking Simba into the canyon um, with the roaring like, oh, idea? Do you know what? I liked that. Me too. I liked yes, that change. It was like, this is a fun way to make it up. This is like, oh, it's like, 
cool, this is believable. Although, the other thing about the canyon scene, what pre-stampede, is that there's like a like a missing element of setup where like all you're just focused on Simba until it's happening. Like you don't even know the wildebeests are up there. You oh, don't like sure. see what the plan is ahead of time. Like it's like a very simple and small scene from the like the original one where like you see the hyenas up there like wait for the wait for the signal. Sure. And you can sort of like see they're up here, he's down here. Like you don't maybe know exactly what's gonna happen. You're like, can they run downhill? Yes, they can. Uh, but like, w once it starts happening, you're like, oh, I see it all coming together now. Right. Whereas like he's just down there, and all of a sudden, like they show you like a brief shot of the hyenas up at the top, and all of a sudden, they're just stampeding down. It's like there's no, there's no setup as much, and I feel like it, th there, it's there's tiny, like, but it was key. There's like there is one shot where I think you look up and you can see a hyena looking down. Um, I, maybe they just didn't draw enough attention to it. Um, but I agree. I think that they could have like painted that whole thing mm -hmm. just a little bit better. Uh, the other thing about that scene in particular that I thought was kind of strange, and I, I I can't remember if I'm just like misremembering even the original or not, but um, it seems like you sort of have uh, Simba going to the Am I getting this wrong? Simba going to the elephant graveyard and like he has his whole talk with Mufasa and then like him and Mufasa do like the, the playful like, you know, I got right. your back thing. And then it almost seems like the very next shot is them in the canyon and Simba being like, yeah, my dad was really mad at me. It's like, oh, but you worked it out. Or does Be Prepared happen no, in between No, Be Prepared that? happens in between that in okay. both situations. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> then let's talk about Be Prepared oh. because, oh my gosh. I have about one line of notes that says, just no. Just no. Yeah, that's about all we have to say. This yeah. is almost one of those things that I would say, out of like the 200 people we met over the weekend, almost unanimous. The, you, yeah, we um, talk, <laughs> hey, yeah, having talked to like 200 people about this movie now, the unanimous number one thing everyone is, said was... Right. Be pre why, what happened to be prepared? What happened? And I yeah. so I don't, I don't even feel like we need to beat up on it too much because right. it just seems like an opinion everybody's going to agree with anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but this was one where we were in the theater and I was so excited. Like, Be Prepared is one of my favorite Disney songs. Right. And, um, like, it, it, the whole thing happens in this weird, like, monologue that sort of shifts into, like, Scar right. still scaling the rock wall right. with, like, the occasional, like, be prepared. Yeah. Like, and he does like, this, like, like, like chanting a little, like, be prepared, be prepared. Yeah, and yeah. it just, I don't know. I, I, Me and you leaned into each other, like, right after watching it, and we're like, like what, what was what that? that? Like, was, yeah. it, was, it was, like, so bad it was jarring. A little bit. Um, yeah. So that was, that was odd. Yeah. Um, There's also the weird element where, I guess, that is the moment where Scar is recruiting the hyenas. Like, they don't even know barely who he is right like this is the first time he's talking to them and within like 30 seconds he's like recruited this entire army which like i don't know why that like why why he wasn't just previously in cahoots sure because like it makes some of the lyrics of the song not make sense where it's like meticulous planning and like years of denial and right you know it's like well how meticulous could you have been and like you know, you know if you've been if it's revealed to us later on that you've been working with the hyena since before the movie began, it's like, yeah, oh, he's been in, a, he's been planning this. Like this has been like, a, yeah, yeah, we've like, been leading up to this for some time now. Right, right, yeah. Although even that doesn't make sense because Simba can't even be years old at this point. He's still like a cub. Right, sure. So there's yeah. that. Right. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. That's that's getting into other nuances. That's, <laughs> that's not just that it's not that big a deal, I guess. Um, but. yeah. So I, I don't think we need to spend that much time on it because no. I don't I don't think there's anybody at home <clears> being like. No, that was my favorite part of the movie. Like, even if you liked it, which is fine, yeah. uh, I don't think it was your favorite part of the movie. It's not the thing they did better. <laughs> yeah, I, um, yeah, like, I, yeah. You're probably the minority if you're in that camp. But right, not right. that. That's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, so I don't want to spend too much time on Scar because we have a lot of other stuff to cover. Yeah. But uh, the inclusion of Scar's um, sort of, like, love interest towards Sarabi is another detail that I think was included in this movie that's not... No, oh, it's in, not in, in the, the original. original one. Um, that, again, I feel like is a detail that doesn't have a lot of, like, payout. Like, Scar doesn't need more reasons to dislike Mufasa. Like, it's pretty understandable that if you were next in line to be king, 
that you would be really annoyed that there was that somebody just, else in your way. Right. Like, it doesn't also have to be this, like, Sarabi chose you over me type of thing. Right. Um, and yeah. maybe it helps a little bit to think, like, later on, like, the lions won't follow me until you do because they all respect you. Like, they'll they'll reject me until yeah. you accept me. Like, maybe there's some of that. Um, but I feel like that could be the case either way mm -hmm. like he could just be like it seems like you're not on board with this and it seems like if you were people would like me more right um that was a i don't know i it was a detail that that <coughs> i think if you were going to take that route maybe just put like a little bit more in about it yeah maybe like, like um, it's very briefly alluded to earlier on and then he sort of like has a little talk with her right later but that's yeah it, it didn't seem like fleshed out enough Right, and it, it didn't even seem important enough to Scar. Like, it seems like something in the beginning where, like, I think what we're supposed to assume is that his Scar definitely came from a fight over Sarabi mm -hmm. once upon a time. Like, oh, do you think I, so? Well, he says, like, I would never challenge you, you again. again. Yeah. And it's, like, one of those shots where it, I guess that's what we're supposed to assume. Of course, in the, we, yeah. we've heard other stories as to how he got it. Mm -hmm. Um so I don't know. Yeah, like you would think that like if his whole compulsion to be king was to finally get Sarabi, even that would have um, more like that would be revealed in his motivations, even yeah. if she ultimately rejects but him again. That doesn't really seem like it's really part of it. Yeah, it's just sort of like I just want the other lines to listen to me more. Right. Yeah. It's not, it's not a major flaw in the story or anything like that. It's just one of those details that they changed and it was sort of like to what okay. End. Yeah. yeah. Like. Yeah. Um, so anyway, let's move on. Um, so Simba gets chased out of the Pride Lands. Well, no, I think we got to talk about Mufasa's death. Oh, it was like yeah. yeah. Look, you already forgot about. I already it. forgot about yeah. the most important I think death that in says the entire Disney lot. history. Yeah. Oh goodness Man, gravy. What, so basically, what you were saying earlier, you can get like invested within seconds watching the animated one, and yes. like sure enough, yeah, I had to, I was rewatching the Mufasa death a few times before we made that video, and every time it was just like, man, this sucks. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but this one, it just like I had no emotional. Like I talked, we talked to a few people in line who said they did tear up. But I think for the most part, we got way more people say that like they thought it was kind of flat. And like I just didn't feel emotion about it either time. Yeah, it and, it, it <clears throat> definitely it did not stick with me the same way. I the one thing I would think <clears throat> that they did pretty well was Mufasa climbing the wall. And yeah. like that, that material, the, like that loose gravel the loose, stuff. It's like yeah. I've I've been on that loose gravel. Yeah, me before. too. Yeah, like, so like, like I feel like I get it. I'm like yeah. I know how hard it is to climb, mm -hmm. and like he probably is barely making it up. Uh, and so I thought all oh, that was good. I thought the fall felt a little bit cheesy. Again, I, it's like <laughs> it felt cheesy, especially because almost definitely John Favreau used the animated fall to like influence how Shere Khan falls in Jungle Book, and it's like and then he doesn't reproduce that for the same moment right I'm right like, what was yeah so that i think i think that was not okay and then the other thing was simba watching it happen they do this um like reverse the, super zoom thing on yeah. which is uh, a nod to the original yeah but for this format not good i agree it's like yeah. jarring it like didn't work at, and you know what i thought about that scene in particular i was like why didn't that work as well and i think it comes back to like moments earlier in the animated version, when Simba sees the stampede, they do this like track zoom of fear right up to Simba's face. Right. Like he sees the stampede and it's like, and he's like, oh no. Right. Like, yeah. Like I <laughs> like, know. Yeah. Like, I know what's about to happen. Yeah. And yeah. so like they have, they set you up with the like the zoom. And then when Mufasa dies, they do the zoom out. Right. And it's almost like, this is like, I'm afraid for my life. And then it was like, the worst has happened. Right, right, and it right. was like, like, it's, you don't even notice they're setting you up for it until it's gone. Right. And it's like one of those weird things. Like, it, it was completely unnoticeable to me, like, what was happening. And then this one, I was thinking like, why didn't that, because that's like the, the moment. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it didn't really, it didn't land, I guess, the way that I thought. Um, and then, of course, you know, Simba runs down and he, like, approaches Mufasa. And mm -hmm. this is this is a situation where, like, I feel like people on Twitter, at least that I were communicating with prior to the movie's release, just kept talking about how the way that these animals are animated, it's really hard to, like, really demonstrate the emotion like the that emotions. they're going through. Yeah, that's true. That being said, my dog Indy has, like, disappointed me before or whatever. Mm -hmm. And... She looks sad. Right. Like her ears tilt back, like her body language is different. She's like shrugged down. Um, and like you can tell, like she's like, you know, upset or whatever. 
there is a way to demonstrate real animals looking sad because sure. like real animals can look sad. Yeah. Uh, or and, surprised or angry or right. Yeah. Right. So I think that like they definitely could have just done more, you know, like with with the facial expressions and, and done yeah. like a little bit more with the ears even, yeah. I think could have done a lot. Um, but that's that is one where like uh typically if I'm rewatching the the old one, um like I'll tear up during sure. that scene. It's sad. Yeah. yeah. And this one just it, it didn't yeah. it didn't hit me in the feels the way that Yeah, despite it being nearly shot for shot, it's like I don't know what's how di like, I don't know. Like even so there's two the moment where Scar like grabs him, they still do the same thing on his paws, but then he like hits him in the face or something instead of like throwing oh, like, him. Oh, like releasing his yeah. Hands, yeah. Which is like, I guess that's okay. But like when he says long live the king, like the difference between like long live the king. Like like when he says that to Mufasa, like you can tell Mufasa thought he was about to like help him, and like as he's whispering it, this like horrible one second of realization in right. Mufasa's face is right. like it's just terror and like, oh no, Woo. right? You know, and then it's right. gone, and it's just like that is really impactful. And it's just not there. He's almost just like, long live the king. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's like so nonchalant. It's like not this big. Bleh, yeah, even my even like victory. Right, like even Mufasa when he's like climbing up, he's like scar. <laughs> it's yeah, like, he's like, huh, yo, bro, give me a hand. <laughs> it's yeah. not like I'm about to die. Right, right. Yeah. Um, uh, so I don't know. I don't know. It was it, that was. It was what it was. It was. It yeah. happened. Okay. But that brings us to the best part of the movie, which was Timon and Pumbaa. Oh my gosh. I thought. So I great. love that. Uh, Billy Eichner and Seth Rogen. Yeah. I thought riffed off of each other just Amazing. so well. What a duo. They were really, really good. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. there, I mean, there's so many good things that I can say about it. I thought that um, they were fun because of even how like topical they made the movie yeah uh like they had like a, just like a lot of humor that like refers to just it's like a little meta or yeah a little like of the time yeah right They're right like, oh it's local yeah <laughs> is it yeah it's right here <laughs> yeah oh is it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh so funny yeah so funny i love that i love like in Akuna Matata, they like reference the fact that since they've been singing, Simba's gained 400 pounds on screen. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, they had the reference where like, aren't you going to stop me from saying farting? And they're like, no! <laughs> right, right. Because that was something like, <laughs> like Puma, not in front of the kids. Yeah. That was like what they had from the, uh, from the original where maybe they didn't want to say the word fart. Yeah. Back then. I don't know. Um, they went for it this time. I thought, well, it's oh. like, I don't know if that's funny because you know they didn't stop him or... Right, that was yeah. that. I mean, that was a reference, one hundred percent. Um I also loved like little Pumbaa. Oh my god, the way the that they did that. Hog. Yeah, because like even in the in, this is one of those where I think they did it better, but um, they they changed it to like where typically when you see Pumbaa's backstory in the original, like he just looks like Pumbaa still. Like he doesn't yeah. look like a little Pumbaa. He just looks the same. Yeah, and this was like he was clearly like a little itty bitty adorable pig <laughs> that has With terrible gas. gas. God, like, I love the fro Do you notice the frog? The frog <laughs> shoots out of the water. Again. Yep. Yeah, it's like first the zebras go and then ah. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's Very so funny. funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Timon and Pumba, big thumbs up. Love them. Very good. They also have them like really, I think, flesh out the like Akuna Matata lifestyle in a way that doesn't paint it as nice. Like, if you watched the original as a kid, you might be like, yeah, Akuna Matata, that's great. That's a fun thing to do. Right. Whereas this one is like, they have them really flesh out like, no, what I do doesn't matter, which is why it's okay to live this way, because we live in a line of indifference. Right. Like, if it was a circle, then what I did would affect that, and would affect that thing. I love that he calls it that thing as if it's not standing there. <laughs> right, right, but, right. Yeah, that would make like, it way less cool. Yeah, it would, it would it'd be pretty cool if... Yeah, they're like, it would be really uncool if what we did affected other things. Right, then, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like, then then doing nothing would be really irresponsible. But it's not! So, all right, so it's all good, yeah. So, like, you you the viewer can see through yeah. the Akuna Matata lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, because clearly, I think one option for the, the original is, like, okay, if Scars destroyed the Pride Lands, like, we don't need the huge rock guys. Let's just go live in the forest yeah, with these the guys. Forest. Yeah, eat like, the grubs. Simba still grew up eating nothing but bugs, so yeah. that you could do. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So that would have been an option, that but would have been an I option. think that that does help the idea that like, no, 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 we need to go back to the right way of doing things. Yeah. Um, 
And, and this is wrong. It's not a line of indifference. Right. One thing I super loved, actually, uh, which I thought was a really cool direction style, was like the use of like almost the face GoPro cam. Oh on my Pumbaa. gosh, on Pumbaa when Nala is chasing him. Yeah, they do the the warthog GoPro face cam, and oh my god, that was so funny. And then they do like the like what like the epic hamster thing on Timon. They like you know like that. Dun, dun. Oh yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. And they yes. like zoom in on him, and he's like. Whoa! Right, 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 right. Yeah, that, oh, man. Yep. Yeah, that yep. was that was really good. Uh, both those, those like inserting like really weird humor like with camera shots into like an intense chase scene is like man, that's really impressive. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I thought that was super well done. Yes. Uh, okay, what did you think of "Be Our Guest"? Oh, that was hilarious. I was wondering like if they had just put Timon in like the little hula skirt and stuff, I would have been like, "Yep, okay, cool." I wouldn't have questioned it at all. Sure, like, I would have sure, just been sure. like, "Sure, that's just a nod to the original, and it's funny, and who cares where he got it from?" Right. But uh, they did "Be Our Guest." Oh my gosh, I thought I was like, "How far are they going to go?" Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, Th this is one I of those things it. where like the only people who can do it because they're the only people who own everything is yeah. Disney, mm -hmm. and it's like I. I feel like typically you don't see Disney do it. Like they, it's almost the same way. If like you you go to Disney World, like you're never supposed to see a character out of place. Right. Like there's never supposed to be someone from over here in this park. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's how it felt to me, where they were almost like, no, we're doing it. Like yeah. and we're gonna go <laughs> for like, a little bit. <laughs> it totally works though because they make all the other meta jokes. So you're like, yeah, I guess the moon seen Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Sure. Why wouldn't you have? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I thought that was really funny. Um, I'll tell you what I did not like, however, shifting years again, oh gosh, is when Nala is reunited with Simba. Like, I do not like this scene. You don't, you don't like that kind of, like, rekindled? No, no, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. Okay. Well, make, give me the thing. So, <laughs> Nala leaves Pride Rock in search of Simba. Yeah. Right? Well, not, not in search, search of Simba. Simba. No, I'm sorry. No, not the case. Just in search of help. And she's chasing him and all of a sudden they find Simba and, like, Simba realizes it's Nala when she, like, pins him, which, uh, okay. But <laughs> then Nala's reaction speed to, this is Simba, you need to return to be king, is like that. Yeah. And it's just like, like, it's like two lines later, she's like, you have to come back and be king. And it's just like, there's no hesitation or surprise that he's alive or like, oh my God, I, what? Right, like, right. Like you just you got over the fact that your childhood best, best friend, friend who you thought was gone and was supposed to be the king is actually alive and has been living in the woods eating grubs for the rest of his life. Yeah, like and like you're, you're like already like on board straight to business like right. right away. Like again, it's just like it's a tiny little series of things, but like when they realize like when Simba realizes it's Nala, like in the animated version, like he looks up, she looks up, and she's like. She's not surprised that it's Simba. She's surprised that someone recognized her. Right. She's just like, who are you? And, you know, it's like, it's, it's me. It's Simba. And then she, like, has to, like, you know, align right. okay. a few things in her brain. And then she's like, oh, my God, so excited. My best friend is alive. Oh, my God, we thought you were dead. And then she's, like, un preeling the layers like slowly and then she's like oh my wait 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 you're you're supposed to be king oh my you have to come back this you know right you it's like, like it's see like her all dawning on her yeah. yeah so it's almost like the like the pinja thing is supposed to be like how simba knows it's her but like it makes sense that at that point in time she wouldn't just assume that this other lion right. in the woods is her long lost best right. friend it's just like rafiki realizing like Simba! It's just like, no, like, you, no. Like, right. you don't, yeah. So Nala has no reaction to the fact that you've been alive for 20 years. Like, she's just like, yeah, he probably was alive. I don't know. It's sure. as if she was looking for him. Sure, sure, but sure. But she's sure. not. She's like, you thought he was dead, and your first words back are like, you're supposed to be king. Let's go. Right, yeah. You know. So then how did you feel about, can you feel the love this afternoon? <laughs> I'm so glad you phrased it that way, Ben, <laughs> because it takes place in broad daylight. Broad, broad daylight. daylight. I'm just like, guys, it's in the song. <laughs> right, tonight. T that is evening. Tonight. Oh my gosh. So, like, the song is fine. I guess, like, like, I wish it was at night, because it's just like, it's right there. Like, I guess it doesn't really matter, other than the fact that it's in the words to the song. Okay. But, like, whatever. Anyway, I, my other problem. Okay. Oh God, okay. I feel like I might maybe not be allowed to say this. The part where Beyonce is singing, I feel like she's doing like a bunch of extra flourishes and like oh not harmonizing with Donald Glover. And I'm like, 
Yeah. Do you, I don't want to say, like, I didn't like the way Beyonce was singing, because I don't think you're allowed to say that. But, Fair. like, it took me out of the song. She's, like, adding a bunch of extra fun notes, and you're just like, it's really good singing. It's But what, it's not, like, in story? Right, exactly. What you, what you need is for that to be, like, when the credits roll and they replay the song again, uh -huh. and, they, and they, like, do it with all the flourishes and stuff. That is when it's, like... Ooh, like I love I love hearing it in this version because of, of course they couldn't do it right in in the original or like during the movie because that would be weird. Yeah. Um, except they did it in the movie and it was like <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah, it like it took me out of the movie for a second. Right. Right. Yeah. And so it's it's probably a hard decision to where and I, I'm sure I would feel the same way if I was like on the production side of things where it's like you let Beyonce do what Beyonce. Wants I to know. Do. Like, I know. That's the thing. And, yeah. And so I'm sure the the thinking like no we got the person we have to let the person do the reason why you hire the person right um to me that is what i was imagining in the song while it was happening the background rationale was be supposed to be <laughs> instead of like paying attention to these two lions frolicking during broadly daylight sure right you know which was you know also a thing mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. what do you think of uh, donald glover i thought donald glover i phew, Man, I just think he's so good. Right? He's um, so good at everything. Like, when when he pops out, so the first <clears throat> line you get out of him is when he's singing the song, he sort of, like, busts out of, um, like, yeah. a, like, a thicket. And um, he's, like, mid-song. And, I mean, his, I think he's just a spectacular performer. He's a great singer. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. He, I, his voice just carries in such a great way. Um, I thought it was perfect casting. I also liked Young Simba, for what it's worth. Oh, yeah, as well. I like Young yeah. Simba. I mean, I liked... Beyonce as Nala. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, um, but it was like that, like, there's just a few moments in the song. Yeah, in particular. Sure, but, sure. Anyway. Um, so where do we move on from there? Uh, What's next for you? Simba finds Mufasa or Cloud Mufasa or whatever. Oh, <sighs> boy. I, I, I don't... Okay. I feel like they weren't sure whether they should really have Mufasa appear in the sky yes. or not really have him appear in the sky. And I feel like, make up your mind because what you did was sort of halfway. It was, and, yeah, you can either go this way or that way like, and you didn't either. And you didn't either. And um, that's the problem. So yeah. like, I would have been like, he's looking up and I'm like, it's just sort of like lightning up there and I'm like, okay, like if you just want it to be that Simba has this internal monologue or like, like moment of realization, like that's cool. Sure. I'm okay with that. He doesn't literally have to see Ghost Dad appear in the clouds. Sure. But there are obvious lightning strikes in the shape of a lion. Yes. And it's just like... The, the, the clouds have it, some shape, I think. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it sort of looks like him. But yeah. this, this, I think, again, from, from a production standpoint, I have to imagine the struggle that they were having was when and how and where to, like, cross the line into doing something that doesn't naturally happen. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so they were like, well, we'll be super subtle with it. And it was like, you kind of needed to decide on yeah. that one because it's, I don't know, I I think that it helps a little bit for the impact of the moment. Yeah, um, to have like a big storm up there. But let me, here's the thing. I would even give them a pass on it, just sort of like not fully committing to, you know, ghost lion. Sure. Except what they choose is lightning. And then like in a very, and if you're going to make lightning be the form of, Ghost Mufasa, like, okay, okay, whatever. But then later in the movie, as Simba is about to die, and is about to be thrown to his death, lightning strikes directly below him and makes it even worse. It makes and it even, just like, yeah. was that Mufasa? <laughs> like, wait a second. <laughs> right, right, right. That's what, the, that's what I immediately thought was like, you see the lightning strike, Jay, what it was was a fatherly nudge to let Simba know, hey, don't fall. Don't fall. It's Hey, really don't fall now. <laughs> it's like, this is going to be bad for you if you fall off this giant cliff. Yeah, you know but what? But like, in case you weren't aware, there's also fire. <laughs> it's just like, hit Scar. <laughs> hit Scar. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a twist? Like, <laughs> boom. Yeah, Scar just gets hit by lightning and the whole thing's over. <laughs> Oh my god. So, uh, yeah, I would have been okay with the lightning, except that they also keep the lightning for later. And it's like, you've established that the lightning was Mufasa, and now you're making Mufasa make the situation so much more dangerous for Simba. Right, and, right. Okay. You're not helping Mufasa. Okay. You're not helping. So, that's my thoughts on that. Yeah. Uh, we already talked about Rafiki and the stick. Let me tell you, okay, I, I, I think I've covered pretty much everything I want to talk about, except my one... The biggest eye roll of the whole movie. Okay. Let me know if you think about this. 
It is when the battle is beginning and they cut to Nala and she says, Lions, attack! I was just like, oh man, I think I almost like, oh, I was like, that was the worst line I've heard all year in any movie. I, that was so terrible. Who wrote that? I 100% like, agree with you. <laughs> as if it was like necessary to announce. I know, like the, they're fighting. Just, they would just, Go! The, they will follow you. Yes, like, yeah. oh man. Um, um, oh. I, I don't know if that was intended to be this moment where you, you can see that Nala is very clearly like taking up the like leadership helm for mm -hmm. the, like, the lionesses or mm -hmm. something. I think um, her just going and them following would have done that. No, I agree. Uh, I agree completely. You did not need your Avengers Assemble moment in the same way you did not need a stick Mjolnir moment. If anything, it would have been cooler if instead of the stick, it was in fact Mjolnir <laughs> yeah, and right. he pulled he a hammer. Pulls it, you're like, whoa, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> the lightning's not Mufasa, the lightning is Rafiki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Slash <laughs> Thor. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, a man. mashup we need. That's is it. Where's Rafiki the crossover? Is Rafiki is so Beta Ray Rafiki. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, there you go. Okay. There you go. There, that's, um, oh, man. Okay, so. Lions attack. That's going to be the pinned comment on this video. Mm -hmm. Lions attack. Yep. Yeah, no, I agree with you completely. That's uh, even something, like, for the, 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 the DVD release. If you guys wouldn't mind even just removing that altogether. Just, it can be like, like a nod to like Zazu's like, yeah. not saying something. You just see here, like, sort of. Right, yeah. And you're like, was that supposed to be a word? I don't know. They went. <laughs> they went. Clearly they followed. Yeah. We just, all understand just what happened it there. with like a, a roar. And yeah. we're good. Oh, mm -hmm. man. Oh, man. So overall, do you have like a like an overall score? Um, to... To, to be honest, I actually, I feel like in a, in the weirdest way, like the Rotten Tomatoes sort of breakdown is, is almost exactly how I feel mm -hmm. about it. So that was a... I think we go on a scale out of 10, or do we down about 100? I, you know, to me, I just use decimal points, so it doesn't matter either way. But, okay, yeah. so I, I think that there were a lot of things. I, I honestly, I feel like I do want to make it clear that like I, I had fun watching the movie. It's a perfectly I did watchable movie. I, I did enjoy it. Um, I think I would give it a six. I, I, well, I put 6.5. A 6.5. 6.5, 6, 6 there you go. There you go, yeah. okay. Yeah, I, I think that there are things that I love about this movie, and I did laugh out loud in the movie. I, yeah. And like, I had fun with it. I did. Um, I think the big thing for me was all of the uh, super impactful moments. Just, they didn't deliver in a way that was bringing the emotion out of me, and I don't know if like mm -hmm. maybe the more movies we watch and the harder we assess these things, if I'm just becoming... Uh, I like, don't think so. I was still emotional at Woody almost getting in the box with Bo Peep and sure, you know, sure. and like Gabby Gabby reuniting with a child. Not you know, last month I barely knew Gabby Gabby. Like you know, whatever. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's our score. Um, I'm very very curious to hear mm -hmm. what you guys thought. I know that when we were talking to people over the weekend, and this is cool because we sort of have like a little bit of a an idea yeah. of the way that people were responding. It was so funny because we would ask people like, what'd you think of the movie? And they were like, well, or be people prepared. would say that they, yeah, be prepared, <laughs> be prepared. Um, dying to hear what you guys think. Be sure to leave all of your thoughts in the towel section down, down below. below. Also, what would you have thought of Rafiki Thor? Because I think that could totally be a thing and yeah. should be some fan art. If should that's be. something anybody wants to whip up for I us. I think they should. Anyway, guys, uh, otherwise, I think that that's all we have for today. I think so. Guys, thanks so much, as always, for watching today's video. Please remember to leave a like if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Lion King action from us. If you would like to see some fast facts about the Lion King, you can check out this video right here. Or if you'd like to see Simba's magic roar explained, you can check out this video right here. But, Ben, that's all we have time for today. I will see you in another Life, brother. Bye!